<clears throat> excuse me. Hello, welcome guys. How are you? Um, tonight I'm going to be showing you guys how to do um, a couple of different fill patterns as well as how to calculate the number of stones that you're going to need for your project, how to like measure the surface area, and then how to calculate based upon your stone size, what um, like how many growths of rhinestones you're going to need. It is going to vary based upon the type of fill pattern that you do. Um, so we'll, those kind of go like hand in hand. So when you are joining us, say hi. Let me know you are here. I see Miss Charlene is already here. How are you? Miss Renee is here. Welcome, welcome. Um, fun, fun thing about Miss Renee that I am very, very excited about. Um, as most of you know, we have our monthly bling box that we are, what, four days away from those shipping. So those will ship on the second. They're going to ship on the second this month. Um, if you're new to the bling boxes every month, we have a curated bling box that's curated around a theme. It includes a five to six full size rhinestone products, one to two projects, um, one to two patterns, then you get exclusive discounts that you can only get by being a member of the box for that month, as well as free shipping. And then we do our monthly unboxing, and then we do tutorials working on those projects throughout the month. Um, those are going to ship on the second, and Miss Renee has um, collaborated with us this month to help us with this month's themes. Um, picking the colors that are going to be in this month's box, as well as helping design the custom mix that will be in this month's box. So I'm very excited about that. This is our first month that we are doing a collab box um, with her, and her company is Tumblers by Renee. So she does have um, an Etsy shop where she also makes um, rhinestone patterns. So you can go check her out as well if you're in our Facebook group. Um, if you just search for her name, Renee Craig, um, you can find links to her patterns and her Etsy shop um, and all of the other fun bling items that she has going on. So if any of you would like to help collaborate um, and put together a bling box in an upcoming month, um, helping us design the pattern, you don't have to be a pattern maker to do that. Um, I can help create the pattern if you have the idea then you can pick the rhinestone colors that will be in that month's box as well as help us um, design the custom mix for that month. So I would like to do this um, at least a couple times throughout the year, like every other month, um, have collaboration box where you guys are um, helping me put that together so that it's more of like an immersive experience. Um, so just reach out to me if you would like to help do that. You can either DM me on Facebook or send an email to info at um, and we can we can get that going. So there is only four days left to order for this month. They will ship on the second. Um, you would go to our website and then under the bling box section, go to the flat back bling boxes. There is, I don't remember quite, there was like maybe eight or nine boxes left this morning. So I make about 60 boxes every month. Um, most times they sell out before the end of the month. I might have one or two left on the day that we ship them. And then I let you guys know like the day that I'm shipping if I have any of them left. So go grab those up. Um, again, we are collaborating with Renee, which I'm very excited about our first collab box this month. So let's see who has all joined us. How are you guys? Miss Teresa is here. Valerie, how are you? Um, I'm not sure. What is that? Tubala, how are you? Um, Miss Stacey's here, Ray is here, and always Miss Mona, how are you? How are you? So we are going to, I'm going to show you guys a couple different, um, fill patterns that we are going to, um, work on. You can use these on an array of different projects that you're working on whether it's with flat back brainstorms or also with hot fix for those of you who make apparel or hats or anything like that. It's not just specific to tumblers that you can use these on. 
Um, you can really apply it to any type of project that you're working on. And the different types of them are also going to go into how you calculate the number of stones that you're going to need for a specific project, as well as the cost of that. Um, so a couple of the different patterns that you can do. And if you guys want a copy of this kind of like quick reference guide, this is on our website. It is under the um, bling tips. So go to blingyourthings.com, go to the bling tip section. And then this is like, I don't know, within the last 10 blog posts um, that you can find this. And then you can find more detailed information um, about the different types of fill patterns, different techniques that you can use. And you can save this for reference so that you have it for future. Um, so the normal type of pattern that we all generally use um, working with tumblers and pens is the honeycomb method. So this is laying rows of rhinestones and alternating them back and forth. So you're going to lay your whole row. And then the second row, you're going to lay a straight row again, but you're going to kind of shift them over so that they're nestling in between the two stones from the prior row. Then the other most common pattern is the scatter pattern. So this one is literally just laying the rhinestones in a random order with however you feel that they are going to fit and look best. It is best when you're doing scatter, um, best practice is to use at least three different sizes so that you can get a variation of the height as well as the width on the rhinestones to give it like a different effect. Um, a lot of people shy away from the scatter fill because they don't like the gaps that are created with it. No matter what you're doing, you're putting circular items next to each other you are always going to have gaps. Um, you just have to embrace them and it's going to look good. Like we're seeing those gaps because we're working with it. We're really close to it, but at a distance, you really don't notice those gaps. And you can also color the background of your projects to help blend in those gaps. So if you, if you have any questions about that, um, please feel free to post them and I will try to answer them. Um, you can use as many different sizes as you'd like. If you're someone who likes to have very minimal gaps, you can use smaller size rhinestones like SS4 or SS6 um, to help fill in those small gaps. But honestly, you really only need three different sizes. If, um, if you use SS10, SS16, and SS20, you're going to, the SS10s are going to help fill in the smaller gap. And then the SS20s are going to help give lots of coverage. So when you're, if you're using scatter and you're calculating the number of stones that you're going to use, if you're using those smaller sizes, the fours and the sixes and even the eights, remember, it's going to take twice, the, sometimes three times as many of those to cover a one inch by one inch surface area compared to using a size SS20. So using two to three times more stones, it's also going to be more costly to create that item. The detail is going to be amazing, but the cost to produce that item for yourself, um, whether it's a, you know something for yourself or you're selling them, your production costs are going to be a lot higher than if you're using the bigger size rhinestone. So just keep that in mind. Um, then another one of the, um, fill patterns is the grid pattern. And then that also goes with the deluxe grid pattern. And we call this one deluxe because you are again using smaller size rhinestones and it's going to cost more money because it's twice as many stones to create this pattern. So with grid, you're using this where you're just doing straight lines horizontally and vertically to cover your surface area then with the deluxe grid you're going to put a smaller size rhinestone so if you use for your larger size say ss20 you're going to use like an ss6 to fill in kind of like that little square gap that's created 
um, in between like the four corners of the rhinestones. So this one's going to use twice as many stones as, as this one or even the honeycomb. If you use SS20 with SS6, that looks, they fit very well together. You can also use SS16 with SS4. Um, again, the 16s and the 4s are smaller. They're going to cover less surface area and increase your production costs of your, of your projects. The other one that goes hand in hand with the honeycomb pattern is the dual honeycomb. You might see some other people call this um, like the cushion method where this one is, and the reason I call it the dual honeycomb is because it's the same as the honeycomb pattern, but you're using two different sizes of rhinestones. So again, like an SS20 and an SS10, but you're laying them all in a straight row, alternating between the sizes. You're just alternating back and forth between the two sizes. So this one is kind of like the honeycomb, but your alternating size is going to be like, half the size of the larger stone. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then the other one is a radial fill that you're gonna do on items that are circular. And this is just laying circles of rhinestones. And then as you cinch in towards the center, you're going to take out a couple of rhinestones per row. This type of fill pattern is going to be best if you're doing if you color in the background it is going to create the biggest amount of gaps just because of the rhinestones are a specific size they're fitting into a specific space um and the, you're not going to be able to prevent the gaps or how big the gaps are if you're using one size rhinestone you can again use filler rhinestones with this which would be the fours and the sixes to cover those gaps, but it's best to color your background with this type of fill pattern. Then the last one that we will talk about is an island contour fill. In this type of one, you're going to use on things like your, if you're putting a name on a tumbler. So say you put a, I don't think I have one right here. So you put a name on a tumbler. And then you with the vinyl, right? Or you drew it with your paint pens or however you decided to put the name on the tumbler. You're going to fill in the name with your regular size rhinestones. And then around the outside of it, you're going to do an outline. So that's what we would call a contour fill. It's going to contour the outside line of whatever object you're doing. It could be straight lines. It could be curvy lines really whatever um and most times those lines are going to be the same size and they're just going to get bigger each time you add a row um so like in this example all of these are following the same line and then as you go towards the center they're getting smaller to create the the outline the contour of the object that you are um that you're rhinestoning. And you can really use that on, on several different things. But when you're doing names, I see a lot of times that people end up where after they've completed it, they get kind of frustrated because the name is not standing out against the other rhinestones that they use. And most times it's because they didn't add a contour fill um to the to the outside of that name um adding that type of outline not only makes it look more professional and more clean but it's going to help especially if you're using contrast and colors it's going to help that name or those details pop out against the main colors of rhinestones that you're using most times i will use an ss6 or an ss4 to do the contour fill, the outline fill um, around my name, because then I can get in really close. I can make sure that I get full coverage and the, the gaps between either my main color and then the colors I use on my names is going to be minimal. Um, if you are in our Facebook group, um, which is Bling Your Things Rhinestones, 
you can search the group for tumblers that have names on them and see examples of that as well as on our website um i can't remember if it's in this post or another one um i gave examples of doing the outline around a name of what it looks like with and without and you will see that there is a huge difference in the overall end appearance when you add that outline taking that extra step um, really gives your product more of a clean finished professional look so that was a mouthful any questions about that um about any of these i'm gonna kind of do a demonstration of some of those and then we will also have our giveaway our weekly giveaway that we do every week which will be for a ten dollar gift card to our website bringyourthings.com um you i will give you guys the keyword at some point then you will enter it into the comments and then our random comment picture picker will pick someone we did change the rules a little bit last week we've had a series of weeks where um the same or a couple people were winning over and over and we want to make sure that more people have the opportunity to win and win the gift card so we are making it that you can only win one time um i think it was one time in a four week or a 30 day period so if you win I think that's what we did. Like, like you can only win once a month. So if you won last week, you wouldn't be able to win again until the same day of the following month. So I will kind of keep a list of that. And if we do pick your name, um, I would pick someone else. You do still have to be present to win when we pick the person. Um, and in order to claim it, you would go to our website pick um, order one of our free patterns that gives me your information so that i can contact you via email with the information on how to use your ten dollar gift card um and if you are new to um, our business all of our printable patterns are free all of our tumblr and pen principal patterns are free um we are not charging for them anymore we changed this um, i don't know maybe a month ago now so if you haven't downloaded um all of them or you want to try a couple of them out you don't have to download them all at once um but go to our website under the patterns the printable patterns those are all free and we have several patterns in several different sizes um available for 20 ounce the 30 ounce tumblers 18 there's a several different variations if you go to the website and the patterns are seven dollars you're not in the right section those are our tumblr wraps and those are a physical product that do ship to you and those are printed on vinyl i print those in-house and they are printed on vinyl and then you attach the vinyl to the tumbler and then it's literally bling by color you would attach your rhinestone to the matching color on the tumbler and you would just rhinestone it that way whereas the printable patterns you're following the pattern and then like going from the pattern and placing that on your tumbler so that is the difference between those two um if you have any qu questions or issues with downloading any of them feel free to reach out to me um send me an email info at when your things.com you can also post in the group but a lot of times it's easier for me to help you troubleshoot through email that it is to post in the in the Facebook group. So any questions about any of the fill patterns? What is I would love to know what your guys's favorite fill pattern is. And if there's any of these on here that you have not tried that you want to try. So let me know in the comments, which is your favorite fill pattern? Minty drink. Hello, Miss Terry. And I'm going to change this one to solo layout. Are you guys still there? what is your what is your favorite fill pattern 
Nobody has a favorite one? All right, if no one's going to comment, I'm going to call some people out. Let's see. Is Miss Charlene still here? What is your favorite fill pattern? What about what about Miss Stacy or Miss Rainey? What fill pattern do you guys like? Why is my Sorry, I was losing my my camera. So we got a couple honeycombs. We got a depends. She um, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name. Um, she would like to rhinestone one with her name, and Charlene wants to try the cushion pattern so i will show you guys those and then i have a couple different examples of how we can do those and then the other thing that i wanted to show you guys is i'm going to use our aurora rhinestones these are the aurora white so these are somewhat of a transparent rhinestone and Let me get the focus a little better. So on the backs of these, they do not have a foil backing like most of the regular um, rhinestone colors do. They don't have a foil backing or a solid color backing like a lot of um, the mocha colored rhinestones and whatnot. And then they have an AB-ish type coating on top of them. So this rhinestone, depending upon what color of the backing you're going to put it on, is going to change the color appearance of the rhinestones. So these stones are actually pretty versatile um, for whatever color you're trying to work with. They're going to take on the appearance of its background color. So that is why... Um, I colored these um, little wood cutouts with different colors so that I can show you what they will look like against different backgrounds. And then it can also change too if you add mica powders to your glue or if you add glitters to your glue, it will also change the appearance of this color of rhinestone. So to color these, I just used paint pens these are the Thule Art paint pens. They are acrylic paint. Um, this is the Neon series. I like this um, this set of series. They're kind of bright, vivid colors. Um, they have a whole plethora of different colors of paint pens. If you, they are linked on our website. If you go to our website at the bottom, there is a link for products we love on Amazon, and they are linked right in there. So to attach these, I'm going to use Bob Smith two-part, 30-minute two-part epoxy. Normally, I wouldn't use um, this type of epoxy on wood but because we are demonstrating. And I wanted you guys to be able to see this effect like kind of right away. That is why I am using this instead of the super tight fusion tack like I normally use. Um, putting the epoxy on wood. It is very, um, because it's very liquid, it's going to soak into the wood very quickly. So you can still use it, but you're going to need a little bit more epoxy than you normally would if you're using if you were doing like a tumbler or something. 
And then with the two part epoxy, you want to mix it up really well. You want to use equal size amounts of each one, the epoxy and the hardener. I normally do about a pea size amount of each one. Since it is a 30 minute epoxy, that means you have about 30 minutes of work time. This is going to vary too, based upon your the elements that you're in, if it's more humid or it's cold or different moisture, things like that will adjust your overall work time, as well as if you don't mix it well enough. If you're using it and you find that you're only getting about 10 to 15 minutes of work time, then you probably didn't mix it enough. So it should have, when it's mixed well enough, it should have an overall like milky appearance. It shouldn't look clear and it shouldn't look um, yellow. It should have like a little bit of a milky appearance to it. If you mix it for about 45 to 60 seconds, that will be, um, it will be thoroughly mixed. And then you can use these little makeup applicators um, to apply, or you can also use toothpicks. You can use the silicone tools as well. So then I'm just going to put and I'm going to put a little bit more on here than I normally would, just because the wood is going to soak it up. Sorry, let me get this adjusted so you guys can see. That should be good. So up here on the green part, I already did some with the honeycomb method, or the honeycomb fill, as well as with the dual honeycomb. So this one has 20s and 10s. And then this one just has SS20s. And then I'm going to show you when I you see how these kind of have like a bluish appearance right now. When I put them on the pink, they are going to take on a different color. So can you can you see how against the pink background they're kind of taking a pinkish yellowish appearance compared to the bluish the bluish undertone when it's over the green which I think that's pretty cool. So all of the colors too with the um with the Aurora line of rhinestones, these don't have um they don't have a foil backing. So all of the colors in this line are going to take on a similar effect as these would. 
So we also have um, the Aurora Purple. So these would do the same thing. They would take on a different shade of purple based upon the background that you're using. So hopefully that shows through on the video that you can see that between the bluish, the bluish hue looking, and then against the pink, their pinkish yellow. And then I will put some on this blue. And then on this one, I will do, um, I'll do the grid fill instead of the honeycomb. So this one is just putting straight lines horizontally and vertically. And with the grid, even with the honeycomb, the, um, Your eye is always going to be attracted to the table of the rhinestone, which is the flat part of the top of the rhinestone. That's called the table. That's where your eye is going to be drawn to. So you just want to make sure that when you're lining them up horizontally and vertically, that your table is what you're lining up, not the actual like size of the rhinestone or like the bottom the bottom edge of the stone it's this top part the table that you want to line up because when it's out of a line that's where your eyes drawn to so so see with the blue they kind of have a greenish, they kind of have a greenish appearance with a little hint of yellow. So I think that's pretty cool. What do you guys think? Um, these are actually, so these are called, um, oh. Hold on, my camera, my other camera's falling down. <laughs> there we go. So these are the Aurora line of rhinestones. This one is the Aurora white. And these are glass rhinestones. Um, all of the rhinestones that we um, that we have on our website are glass. We used to carry um, resin and jelly rhinestones but we decided to focus more on the higher quality glass rhinestones so that is currently all we have um or all that we carry now is the glass rhinestone so right now we have um the aurora white and aurora purple and then I will be adding additional colors um, to this line very soon. So that was those. And then I did this um, compact in the purple 
which one is this? It doesn't have a name. Um, so I did this with the purple, the purple neon um, paint pen. I sanded it and then I cleaned it with alcohol and then I colored it with the purple paint pen. Um, so this one, I will be able to show you um, the radial fill, but I'm going to use um hold on one second i need to go grab them i'm gonna use six teams on this one let's see So these are, like I said, very versatile with different projects that you're doing. If you run out of a color that that you're working on and you have these on hand, if you color the background of your project, you can probably come up with a color that is very similar to the color or the shade that you are working that you're working towards based upon how you do the background and you don't have to use like the paint pens or spray paint you could mix in mica powders with your glue you could also mix in glitter And when you mix in the glitter with them too, it's going to make it um, even more shiny and sparkly because the glitter, the glitter effect that you're going to get with that as well. And then I will go ahead and give you guys tonight's keyword for the, for the $10 gift card to our website blingyourthings.com the keyword is hashtag aurora just like the rhinestones so hashtag aurora and then you do need to be present to win um it is for us only And then you will, if you are the winner, you will go to our website and order one of our free printable patterns that will give me your contact information. And then I will email you um, the info on how to use your $10 gift card. You will have um, 30 days from the date that you won um, to use the gift card which I don't think would be hard to do. <laughs> you can use it on anything on the website. There is no restriction. The only restriction is that you have to use it in 30 days and it cannot be combined with any, um, with any coupon codes. So, so that is it. You can use it on the bling boxes if you'd like which if you haven't gotten the April box, those are gonna ship on the second. So there's only like four days left to order, to order the bling box. All right, so I got that mixed pretty well. So Valerie is asking, does the glue have an odor? So this is um, this is a two-part epoxy, and it does not have an odor. 
It's not like um, the E6000 where it has a very strong smell. Um, it is recommended that you use it in a well-ventilated area. So if you have like a fan or something, don't blow it like directly on your like work area, but put it enough so that you're still circulating the air in the room that you're working in. You know, whether that's a ceiling fan or whatever. Shoot, I didn't mix up enough. And then while I do this, I forgot to show you guys. So one of the projects from this month's wing box was these um, cool little towel clips that we have or that we had. Um, so this was I made this with the custom mix that was in this month's box. It was called Girl Crush. So I kind of just separated out um, some of the colors to make. Um, to make like the dual honeycomb fill. And then I started this one um, on last week's live. And then I just did around the edges. So I think that um, this turned out really well. And then I made my other one. I'm not quite done with it. I need to go back and do around the curved edges with some smaller rhinestones. And then this one I just did in a straight um scattered fill so that kind of shows you like the different variations of a couple of the fill patterns so right around the edge right here this would be considered like the the contour fill or like an island fill and then i did the scatter over this side and then on this one right there in the center i did the the dual honeycomb so if you guys finish those two, I would love to see how you guys created them. Um, if you post them in our Facebook group, which, oh, yes, don't forget about we started the monthly contest in the Facebook group again, the monthly um, picture contest. So with that, if you go to our Facebook group, Bling Your Things Rhinestones, in the pin post is the information on um how to enter so all you have to do is post four different pictures it doesn't have to be um four different projects it can be four of the same project just with like different angles um different backgrounds whatever you want to do it just has to be four four pictures you could use four separate projects if you wanted it. it's just four four pictures in the same post or four pictures throughout the month. Um, use the monthly hashtag for the month that you're entering. So for March, it would be, the hashtag would be BYT March 2024. And then list the color of rhinestone that you used of our product. And all you have to use is at least one of our rhinestone products in your project. That's it. And then post that. And then there will be two winners each month. One will be for a $25 gift card. And your project can be featured on our website and our social media. And then the second one will be a $15 gift card with 
um, with also being featured as well. So we're gonna do that on a monthly basis. That will be an ongoing um, little contest that we have just for the Facebook group. And you can make your posts um, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. How we will find them is by the hashtag that you um, the hashtag that you use. And then if you want to tag us in your post, just so that we see it, you can also do that. You can post it in other Facebook groups if they allow you to post information like that. And sorry, one second, my camera is falling over. I need to put something. There we go. That should be good. I put some weight on it. Um. Oh. Here we are. Okay, so this one doing the radial fill, I'm gonna work from the outside in. And I probably should have used 20s to make this go faster. So I'll just do like a couple rows to kind of show you guys. Um, but someone, I think it was April was asking about the paint pens. So there's a couple different brands of paint pens. Um, the ones that I'm using are Thule Art brand. They have a whole wide range of um, color options, the different like options for the thickness of the, the head on the marker. The ones that I used on this are the neon version and they are the medium tipped. I've used the, the skinny ones. If you're doing detail work, the skinny ones, the fine tip ones work really well with that. Um, but I generally use the medium ones when I'm trying to cover um, a large a large area. I will say I don't like the ones I got the ones that um, are like the metallic line. And I don't like those for working with tumblers or pens or anything like that. They give it kind of this like, um, it has like a silverish tone to it. And the colors just aren't as bright. They kind of look muted. And they kind of look, um, they look dull, to be honest. They look dull, the metallic, the metallic ones do. Um, so I don't sell them. But if you go to our website and down at the bottom of the home page, there is a little box that says products we love on Amazon. If you click that link, um, it will take you to our little storefront that we have on Amazon. And you will find a link to the paint pens in there as well. So then you'll know that you're getting the ones, um, the same ones that, that I'm talking about.
And then Valerie is asking, is the compact silver before? So this is um, one of the compacts that we have on our website. We have, I have several of these left. So yes, beforehand, they are silver. And then on the back side, they're kind of, they're not textured, but they do have a textured appearance. Um, so yeah, both sides are silver and then I sand it with a hundred grit sandpaper. So I do have those on the website and then I also have some heart shaped ones. So let's see where are we at. So normally with like the radial fill, I would do it all the way around and then go smaller from the outside in. To save time, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you should be getting the idea of how you're kind of just stacking them one row in. You're not really doing um like the honeycomb fill where you're kind of nestling them in between each other you're just doing um solid rows solid rows each time you go in you don't want to push them in between like the honeycomb fill they're going to be on their own separate line And then you can see with the purple, they are taking on a purplish effect as well as a little bit of a bluish, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so Charlene is asking, do you sand after you paint? N with this, no, I don't. Um, if I sand before, even with a tumbler, I'm gonna sand the tumbler first, and then I'm gonna paint. You can sand again, but then you're gonna take off a little bit of that paint. Um, but it's not required to sand again after you paint. If you if you want to put a sealant on your paint, I would recommend using a matte, um, a matte finish. If you put one that has a glossy finish, then that I would recommend that you lightly sand it again because the, the glossiness is going to make it slick. And you want, um, uh, like the reason you're sanding is because you want to give Think of it like you're adding, you're one, adding more surface area, but you're adding like a place for your glue to root into, to like sink down into and attach to like tree roots. That's, that's really the reason why you sand. So let's see, let's go back here. So we will have that. So any other questions, guys? Why is it like double? Um, let's see, let's see. I think I got all of the questions. Someone on Facebook says, I have a question. Um, please feel free to post it in the, the comments and I will I will try to answer it. Um, I don't know what your name is, though. You would have to allow StreamYard permission to see your information so that we can see your name. But I can still answer your question. Um, let me just go back through here. Yeah, I think I got I think I got everybody's question. So we will go ahead and do. We will go ahead and share the screen so we can do tonight's giveaway. Why is it not showing again?
oh, this thing is so frustrating sometimes. Like some weeks it works and it just comes right up. But then other weeks it wants to be difficult. All right. Allow. Oh, there we go. And then I wanted to show you guys um, on our website, the blingyourthings.com. If you go over to Bling Tips, this is where you will find um, the information um, in more detail about the rhinestone fill patterns that we talked about tonight. So that is right there. And then several people in our Facebook group had asked about fonts to use on rhinestone tumblers. So you could also find that on our website. Um, I give 10 font examples of fonts that work really nice when you're rhinestoning um, tumblers and applying the name to that, as well as recommendations for sizes of rhinestones to use and then sizes of rhinestones to use for, um, for filler rhinestones to fill in your gaps. So there's that. And then there's um, lots of other posts about um, like essential tools for rhinestoning, um, other stuff for you guys just to kind of like look through if you have questions. You can use this um, as a resource. So there is that. So then we will go ahead and do our giveaway for tonight. And you do still need to be present to be the winner. And you cannot win more than once in a 30 day period. And that started last week. So is Miss Renee 3G plus two? 3G Kids Plus 2 still here. Um, and then she would be our gift card winner for tonight. And she would have to order one of our free patterns. And then I will contact you with the information on how to how to use your gift card. And then if you haven't gotten this month's bling box, you only have a few more days left to order. And there was like eight or nine boxes left this morning. And then those will ship on, um, those will ship on the second. And then I see Miss Renee. There she is. Congratulations. Um, you, you have won before, so you know the process. And... Don't forget to go join our Facebook group if you are not already over there. Um, and then you can enter the giveaway, post your pictures using our um, Ransom's products. And then you will be entered to win a either a $25 or a $15 gift card for this month. Um, and we didn't start this until like the middle of the month. So there's not going to be as many um, entries this month as there would be in a normal month. So you will have a very good chance of winning one of those gift cards. So if you're not in the group, go over to Facebook in the groups. And then um, in the pin post, there's a pin post about all of, um, all of the details to enter that monthly giveaway. And then if you wanted to get this month's wing box, this um you would go to our website under bling boxes and then flat back bling boxes and then you can go right here and click add to cart if you want more information about what's included in there or you want to see what's been included in prior month's boxes there's a couple pictures there as well as on our U youtube channel we do an unboxing every month you can go watch those videos and see in more detail um, the types of products and tutorials that we do every month with those, um, with the boxes. So if you guys have any other questions, I will answer them before, before we get off. And Valerie, thank you so much. Thank you for coming to our lives every week. I love helping you guys out. Um, I enjoy doing all of the tutorials and showing you guys and helping you guys on your on your bling journey and hopefully show you guys something new or show you guys um, little tricks to make your life a little bit easier. And, and yeah, if you guys ever have a tutorial that you want me to do for you, shoot me an email or DM, post it in the Facebook group, anywhere that I can see it. And I will be more than happy to do a live or a dedicated tutorial on YouTube for you. So,
I am more than happy to help answer your questions and make your guys' life easier. So unless you have any other questions, I will let you guys get off for this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always joining me. Join us again next week on Thursday, 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Eastern. I will see you then.